Hi, I'm Lithuanian Little Alien and this is a video for astronomy beginners. I would like to cover three topics today. One of them, star maps. Uh, what sort of app do I use? What can you use to actually see where the objects you want to find in the sky are? Then the second one is uh, light pollution. Where to find the maps for that? What sort of things work and don't work? Where you can actually put your telescope and start stargazing? And the third one, weather conditions. Sometimes weather forecast is not enough and you need a little bit more information to see if the conditions are well enough in the place where you are. Talking about star maps, it's really useful to know that during the night you need to adjust, your eyes need to adjust to the night, to the darkness. That's why sometimes you can't use the light you want to see the maps and stuff like that. That's why astronomers use the red light, which actually does not ruin your night vision and helps you to know where to go during the night. I actually don't really use paper maps, paper star maps, because um, for me, I think they are quite difficult. There are other options that are much easier to use. Also in Lithuania we have cold nights and this paper can turn into rubbish very, very quickly. So I use the phone app. There are so many of them. I just randomly chose one. I read some comments. Uh, people said it's okay, so I started using it. So how does it work? You just point your phone to the sky and you find an object you want to find on your screen. This should be done before you go stargazing. So it's useful even if you don't have a telescope yet, you can see if, you, if it actually is interesting for you and you can find some, uh, something and uh, learn the night sky map uh, using, by using an app. I am recording a screen of my phone to show you a Star Walk 2 app, which is a stars chart app. Let's open it. Basically how it works. Now we have the sky with some stars and also constellations and the links from one star to another to show you where constellations are. The line in the middle, the red line in the middle is uh, our horizon and also the side. So this is, for example, facing north. Everything below is just below the horizon at the moment. To make it look like in the sky, you need to calibrate your compass. So just move your phone this way as it's shown on the, on the screen. And you should get the same when you move your phone, you should find the same things in the sky. Well, now I'd like to show you something I use the most. So let's try on the bottom corner what's new this is where i get all the news about astronomy about what's going on in the sky at that moment and i find it very useful i get notifications for this sometimes i read it sometimes not depending on the, on when i get it so i think it's a great way to find all the news without looking for them the other thing I found very useful is Sky Life. Let's open it to see. This is where you can find when the objects rise and when they set. For example, uh, the sun sets today at 16.42, it's already set. And also you can find the phases for the moon and in the future, for example, I planning to go and uh, stargaze at 8th of November and I can see what sort of craters I will be able to see then. So this is good for planning. The same with, for example, planets. Uh, let's say today I'd like to go and look at the sky at 7 o'clock in the evening and I see that at that time I might see Jupiter and Saturn and Mars properly. So it's a good time to go and visit uh, a night sky. Also for Venus, for example, I'd go to look for it at 5 o'clock in the morning. I use this, I guess, uh, most uh, 
often of all the things on this app. Also, if you have a found something that interests you, let's say I'm just scrolling here and I found uh, Mars that it's up. I'd like to see it on Mars. I press on Mars. Mm, now in this uh, line with the dots, you can see how it traveled already and the other red line shows you the way it's going to travel through the sky later tonight. Also on the bottom you can see it's written Mars. Let's press on that. And now you get information, general information about Mars and all the figures. Numbers you need, for example, if you have go to system, you can uh, put the information into your system and find it. So this can be useful. Also, this is a good way to learn constellation. So on the another corner in the bottom, you can press the search button and look at the objects like this. So for example, here we have constellations. The brighter ones you can actually see now in the sky and those are less bright. They might be just below the horizon at the moment. So this is all 88 uh, constellations and you can find information about them. Let's choose another one. This is the solar system, works the same way. And uh, for, for example, comets, you need to pay extra to find where they are. So this is uh, something I don't really have at the moment, but I don't think I need it. Uh, so I just wait for something uh, like, for example, when the comet is uh, already in our sky and it's visible, I might choose to buy this to know exactly where to look for it. And regarding the deep sky objects, I bought this extra so I can find more information about them. I can find the object and also read about it. So I get to see this because I paid extra one euro or something. So it was interesting to me. I bought it. I don't regret it. It helps me to locate uh, the objects in the sky before I go stargazing. Mm, I check uh, where the constellation is, what is the closest star, uh, the brightest closest star from it, and then this way I try to find the object. Because my telescope is quite small and I need to do it this way, I guess. Then you can find the stars, you can find them alphabetically, uh, choose it from the brightest and also choose it depending on the distance. Uh, the last option is to check where the satellites are. So for example, the stations, space stations uh, that people send to cosmos. I think I might use this in the future because sometimes when I observe, I see something, but I don't uh, really know what that is. And it's very interesting. So I might buy this extra in the future. Mm, and then you can just press on it, choose the object and it shows you in the night sky where to look for it. For now, you can see that uh, I need to pay one euro extra or buy the full package to see where that object is. Um, so this is pretty much it about this app. Ah, one more thing. Uh, you see the arrow on the in the where the remove ads is. So if you follow the arrow, you get to the object. This is the way it works. So for example, I'm looking somewhere else and I want to find the object. I just follow the arrow until I find the object. Light pollution is an enemy of astronomy. It's not a secret. There are maps that you can actually use. I want to show you one just right now. To find the best location for stargazing, I use darksightfinder.com, as you can see on the screen. Uh, this map covers all the world and what you are looking for? Gray areas. What do these balloons mean? Uh, let's press on one. It's uh, usually a national park or an area where the sky is darker and uh, they have good opportunities for stargazing. So if you are lucky enough to live somewhere nearby, you can go and visit them. 
Um, as I mentioned, I live in Lithuania, so I would like to show you where do I go stargazing and how does this map work. If we go closer, we see that um, the colors are changing. So uh, this, as you may already understood, is the city center. So uh, red light means that the light pollution is quite high. And if we go further from the city, I just uh, put the mark on the place where sometimes I go uh, to look at the sky, deep sky uh, already. It's not very vivid if I go in this dark gray area, but you can already see Andromeda and some other galaxies and dark, dark sky objects. Mm, better location where I can go stargazing is in the dark blue area. This is almost perfect for me. I barely look for better places. Of course, it's much better if you have an opportunity to go and visit a gray area or dark gray area. Uh, but I have a chance in the dark blue and it works really well for me. Uh, in, on the right, you can search for an area where you live or where you would like to go to find the location for stargazing and also choose the layer to help you indicate where that place is. So this map uh, helps me a lot to find the location and uh, hopefully it will help you to find it as well. Uh, tips that I can give you if you live in the middle of the city you can actually go and look at the planets maybe moon but not deep sky objects. If you are looking for better views, if you are, want to look at the comet or if you want to look at the, at that time at the, some, some deep sky objects, please try to find a place somewhere away of the, from the city. I actually go to the village, my telescopes are not so big so I take them with me and uh, I, uh, in the village I have some places where it's better to look at the sky and some where are worse that are worse. So I think one of the best is where I block the, the light from the town uh, with my house actually and uh, it's quite dark then so if I'm looking at the part of the sky that uh, is enough for me I can actually see much better just next to the house than somewhere away from it. In the field, in the big field, you should consider to find a place where is the less light pollution from any town um, coming up to your sky. So if you go away from the big city, try to find a place maybe with an object that can block the light of the city. Because in that place you might not see anything anyway where the city is. So it's better if you have like a hill or something on that side and then the ever looks a little bit darker. My tip is try to block the light coming from somewhere even if there is a house that has the lights on all the time you can block it with some, some kind of building or, or something. And it's sometimes better than just going to the field and uh, stargazing in a very, very open space. To know weather conditions for stargazing, knowing the forecast of that day it won't be enough. Uh, you'll probably need other tools to know if it's a good night for stargazing opportunities. For this reason, I use an app. It shows you if it's cloudy, if it's going to be uh, raining at night and stuff like that and in what period of time the sky will look the best. For example, if you are planning to go at uh, 12 o'clock at night, you might not see as good as from 3 to 6 uh, in the morning. So it shows all of that information. The practical tip about the nap is uh, it usually shows you a little bit worse conditions than it actually is. Maybe it's because they are afraid that they will show you that uh, you have an opportunity for stargazing and you'll wake up at night and go and won't see anything. So they say the sky is fair, but it's actually excellent. Or uh, they say that there are no stargazing opportunities and you can see through your window that you can actually see the stars. So um, this is... Um, kind of a tip or observation that I saw that 
uh, it's not always accurate but it's usually accurate um, in a good way you will not have to go somewhere far and then notice that there is no opportunity to look at the sky i'd like to show you night shift app which is for weather conditions for stargazing so let's open this app and we see that tonight it's an excellent time to go stargazing and uh, what else we can see on this page on top you can find the scale that shows when is the best to look at the sky so for example now we see from 7 until midnight it's the brightest line on the scale that means that this is the best period to look at the sky and uh, clouds should disappear until some of them are left only uh, around 11 o'clock and then the sky is going to be covered in clouds later on again also what you can find in this app you can plan for the future so for example today at the bottom you can find it's written sunday november 1st so let's press uh, an arrow and we can find that tomorrow there are not going to be any stargazing opportunities because the sky will be covered in clouds all night and day after tomorrow the good conditions uh, supposed to be it can change but the app actually shows you information every day and it's um, renewed uh, what's going on now now we have twilight and 39 percent of the uh, sky is covered in clouds and you can see the map in the bottom of this uh, highlights it's similar to another app i showed you in this video so here you can see when the moon sets and rises the same with the sun and also when is the best to, to observe planets and also what's going on in the sky all the upcoming events this is it about this app it's quite simple easy and handy so in this video we covered what sort of apps you can use uh, as a tools to help you stargazing to help you look through your telescope watch the night sky if you have anything to add or share some information maybe apps that you use and found it very 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 good and uh, nothing can change it you can share it in the comment section and uh, for Lithuanians, I must say, I can take you with me to go star watching if you actually really into it. And if you plan to buy a telescope and you don't know uh, what sort of telescope to buy, if you want a smaller one or bigger, I can show you through my te small telescope and you can then decide if it's enough for you of what you see through this size of the telescope. So if you are interested, please contact me. And you can also follow me on Facebook or Instagram.